we take this session to actually discuss, you know, what it does for women to break the glass ceiling. I have a wonderful panel with me, and I'll request each of them to probably give an insight into who they are, what they are, professionally and personally, uh, and then we can probably start with asking a few questions that we could uh, discuss and debate about. Over to you, Namita. Hi, everybody. I'm Namita Prasad. Uh, I'm a mother and uh, a working woman. I'm a lawyer by profession. I, uh, I'm the group general counsel for a couple of country companies like Pioneer uh, uh, Inc. E and then um, Control S and Cloud 4C. Um, I'm here to talk about uh, you know, how important it is to w for women to recognize themselves to break glass ceilings. And whether there's a glass ceiling is all in your mind. So uh, let's, let's hear more as we grow up. Uh, I'm a little nervous and I can feel that inch in my, my talk. Pass the baton. Oh, good morning. I'm Joanna. Um, I work with ICRASAT, which is an international nonprofit working in agriculture. Uh, I'm originally from Australia. I left Australia 20 years ago. I've worked in six different countries in international nonprofit field. Um, I have six children, but I also very privileged. When I was single, I used to say, if only I could marry a chef. And I did. <laughs> so I've never cooked since the day I got married. And, and I've been very privileged to have a husband that's been willing to follow my career. It's made a, a huge difference, but there is still a glass, glass ceiling and it's still a challenge. <laughs> and uh, very happy to be here today. Um, hello everyone, my name is Ina Chow. I'm original from China and I live in the States now. So I came here, I have two startup. One is called Salic Technology and the reason I'm here, the, this is my first time in India and the reason I'm here is the Salic Technology got accepted into the T-Hub incubator. So we're gonna have a demo day on the 26th. Another, I have another startup which we trying to bring in American entertainment, sports entertainment concept to China. And I was like, one of my dream was marry a chef. And then later on, like I figure out that marry a chef is a little too much because basically he work all the time. And so it's very privileged for me to be here and be part of the panel to discuss the, what the career mean to um, like modern woman and how we can advance ourselves career wise. You know, I must add on, I think there's something very common between three of us is hopefully marrying a chef. But I made sure that my husband became a good chef. So, you know, that, that's something, I don't know how, my, how many of us will think on that, but that's, that's really a very important KRA these days. Oh. Well, I'll add to that. It was never on my horizons to marry a chef. In fact, marriage was not on the cards for me. I was like, no marriage, no men. You know, I'm good on my own. But then I met my husband who convinced me that, you know, you could also try and have a shot at it. And finally, I did get married and a mother of a five-year-old. So... So, so I think with that, we'll just start with the, the, the initial session itself that, you know, um, is there really a glass ceiling? And if there is a glass ceiling, what does it mean to each of us? And how do we perceive it? Um, you know, Manjula said something very interesting. She said, as women, we are, we create life and we nurture life. And, um, you know, taking it from there and what you said, you know, it's all in the mind. Um, so what is it that, you know, we believe as women that is there really a glass ceiling? And um, in today's time and age, you know, where women are getting the workforce, women are more sure of their identities. Do we need to even have a concept of a glass ceiling or do we need to redefine it? Do we need to talk, or talk about empowerment or, um, you know, rename it for want of a better word? Um, so starting with you, Namita. Yeah. So, um, you know, incidentally, I've had a profession which is um, supposedly to be dominated by men. I've been a, a you know, a lawyer, I've practiced in the high court, um, you know, I've worked in corporate houses. However, uh, you know, I have never actually, and it's, it's something which, which I very blatantly spe uh, speak, I've never felt that glass ceiling really existing in my life. Um, I began my conversation when I said that, you know, it's all in the mind. You know, I come from a very small town, um, a very small village near um, uh, a very remote state, um, uh, which is Jharkhand. And uh, this is a small, small town where we have local schools. Um, you know, my parents have been doctors. Uh, I've, I've always uh, been risen, uh, you know, in a very, very educated environment. So I was blessed. 
but when i meet people um, you know um, and and especially when i meet various categories of people they have mindsets about what a woman can do and what a woman cannot do i think it's all starts you know uh, way back in the history where we had classifications uh, of you know defined roles in the society okay what a person is supposed to do how you're supposed to conduct yourself you know these are the do's don'ts probably we we had a social upbringing which was uh, you know which has been on for generations and centuries now look at it today you know we are all in a digital era um, you know everything is on a click of a button information power communication things change responsibilities change roles change and people need to change it's very important for everyone to be progressive to understand that there has been a slide and a flip change on roles the concept of glass ceiling comes to the purview when people start thinking or assuming that as a woman you cannot do certain things because of certain limitations you have maybe at home maybe because of the work environment maybe maybe because of a social environment it's very important for you as as a woman to progress uh, you know in in the positive direction when you interact with people and make them understand that you're as equal to everybody so that's that's my two cents on this i'm sorry just just to add to what you're saying see while we we say it's in the mind but you know cultural differences in a workplace also sort of matter i mean know that most women when they go for their first job interview or subsequent are invariably asked a question are you married do you have children uh, what's your support system going to be like um, we'll come to i mean you're you're doing something very different in terms of diversity so we'll come to that so those are questions that are invariably answered i remember when i was probably young i was about 24 25 and i used to work long hours i had a senior partner of the firm come up to me and saying why are you working long hours you will get married you need to prepare for that and and this is not something that your in-laws will appreciate or husband would and i was flabbergasted looking at him saying this is a workplace i'm putting in my efforts but the perception was that you're a woman you need to be prepared to take care of a home and that is your priority so you know from a workspace point of view while you can change mindsets but the workplace itself doesn't keep up or match that mindset you know my view is that will be very difficult to 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 change to bring about the necessary change that is for women to succeed I'd, i'd like to sort of relate the glass ceiling not just to the corporate world but to broader society and what women in rural areas are challenged with as well and that also does very much come to in the mind in what's expected and the perceptions of of what women are expected to be able to do um so it's very very real um maybe i give an a an 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 example in australia i mean we didn't grow up with um the same restrictions as what you might have here i mean we grew up saying you can achieve anything you can do anything go and build a career however there's still the, even with that there's still then the glass ceiling once you get into the career there's 80% of teachers are women but when you look at those that are principals or deputy principals or in that administrative area it's 20% that are women now there has to be a glass ceiling there to have such extreme difference um from from that so i guess that's just an example it exists but i agree it it's it's the mind it's people's minds that are really creating that so i want to say that like if in the states in the job interview if you ask hey are you married do you have kids then they're going to then they're going to fly because you're going to face huge lawsuit So um I want to say three things one is actually it's in your mind. So in Chinese we have a say- saying I'm not sure how well it translates to a different culture. So the basic idea is the new born cow does not afraid of tiger because they don't know what a tiger is. Are they dangerous? Sh- what should I do? So they fight very hard and the tiger was confused because the ti- the cows should be afraid of me. but it's not so i want to use this to teach to tell the other woman as well do not have the perception that other people will treat you not well because you're a woman don't have the perception of like you should be afraid of other things be um stupid for a little bit pretend there's nothing there is no bias or anything happen and then you will can achieve what you can achieve And also I admit there is some like a uh, a uh, agenda bias there are a bunch of experiment um one of the experiment is there are survey going to two 
different group of people. So one is the resume is, uh, you can tell from the name, it's a woman. The other is the resume, you can tell that it's a guy. And then there are two identical resume, but the response from the person, whether you should give the person a raise or a promotion is different. So people tend to give men promotion or raise over women. That's not talking about men promote men. They're talking about men and women tend to promote promote men over women. So I do admit there is a, like, so a, a bias thing. What we can do is education. So you need to teach the society, you need to change the culture, to tell them to, you need to empower women. Because at the end of the day, I like the, um, the topic of this um, GES, woman first, but I want to, in the future, when we see it's not, like we don't emphasize gender at all. I want to promote a person, not because you're a man or woman. I see you doing very well at your job, very good at your job, and then I see, oh, by the way, you're a man or woman. That's my takeaway. So, do you believe that it should be about breaking a glass ceiling or it should be as a uh as somebody in the previous session said, about the choices. That a woman should be in a position to exercise her choice and do what she needs to do. Because the pressure of a success, you know, you have women who may not want to be a CEO of a company, but are very comfortable being mid-management and doing other things which would, they would be enabled to do. So my view is that it's all about women and her choices. She should be free to exercise her choices. And if she chose to be in a corporate world and climb the ladder, she should be measured as a person and not because of her gender. Um, so, so the flexibility and the freedom to do choices, you know, have you in your journeys faced issues, you know, whether with yourself or uh, through cultural uh, restrictions that women are restricted sometimes from making those choices. So, uh, yeah, uh, I, I definitely agree. It's like to each his own, you know. So you choose your roles, you choose your responsibilities, and professionally you want to be committed to that. So it's a choice whether you want to be at a mid-management or a, or a top, top level. But to answer to you specifically, um, you know, I began my career uh, from the High Court of Jharkhand. And uh, let me tell you, it's one of the most, uh, you know, um, um, I, I, difficult places to be in for a woman. One, because of the mindset, okay? Um, and the second reason is because you actually are thrown into a place where the ratio of women is to men, you know, in, the, in a room would be like one is to 100, when I say that, um, in a courtroom, right? So when I started my profession, um, you know, as a, as, as a lawyer, it was difficult for me to be accepted even by the clients, you know, especially if they were coming, you know, to me for difficult matters like a bail or a criminal, you know, matter to be discussed. So people are appreh apprehensive whether you're the right representation, whether, it, it, again, I said, it's all about the culture and the mindset of, of the other person who's dealing with you, you know. So that's something which I, I of course, did initially face. But, you know, I have always believed in something that if you want to you know, be somewhere, you can be there. And it's all about how you present yourself and how strong you are, how, how strong you come across in your conversations with people about what you believe, uh, you know, that gets followed. So you have to set the trend, you have to set the path. So does that answer you? Maybe if I just give some more examples, because yes, about your, your, you want to be and, and how you make that path. And if I give some rural examples again, um, so a little while ago when I was visiting some farmers in Gujarat um, and, and they were gathered around, of course, when you visit, all the community comes out and they're all very excited. And so I asked um, who had undergone any training for any agricultural activities. And every one of the men put up their hand and not one woman put up their hand. So I said, oh, well, why haven't the women had any training? And the men said, oh, it's all right, they don't need to because we can tell them what to do. So they didn't have that opportunity. That is a glass ceiling. They didn't have the opportunity. But of course, they have to do exactly what you were saying. They have to speak out. And it won't change until some of the women and some of the men see that and speak out. And another example, I was um, recently, I was asked to give the opening speech 
at an agribusiness training session where they are bringing in uh, people from the rural areas and how they can work in agribusiness. And I walked into the room and there were 70 men and zero women. So before I went up to the podium, I quickly whispered to one of the organisers. I said, why are there no women here? And he said, oh, oh, it's because it's a three-day in-house training and so the women can't leave the home. And I thought, well, no-brainer. Organise your training differently. <laughs> I mean, so we have to think that little bit extra about how we make it more possible for the women to be engaged. And, of course, everyone else has to speak up and, and say we need something a little different. We can crack that glass ceiling, but we have to let those opportunities be there. So there were just some examples in the rural area um, and in training and other areas where we have to think differently. Um, so in US, we talk about the, the pay gap a lot. But when you look at what kind of job men has versus how, what kind of job women have, you see a pattern. So men tend to look for the high paid job like investment bank, lawyer. But women more intend to get the like lower paying job like K-12 teachers, like nurse, etc. I think some of it say about the different persona of men and women. So boys tend to want to be signs and women tend to be play with the Barbie. Um, I think to that, like, there's some ex extent that is true, but I also want to, like, encourage the STEM program to the woman. So not because I am, I, 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 I wear pink, I like, like to play Barbie, that means I can be a scientist. I can be a mathematician. I want to encourage women to be brave, that you look for a career that you like, even though that career means you are not the majority gender in that career. Just be yourself, be be, know what your passion is. So the other is I want to encourage the male counterpart that be more supportive. So a lot of issue we're talking about is, hey, you are a woman, you should take care of the family. So if you don't take care of family, what your husband gonna do? What your kids gonna do? I, gonna, I want to encourage the male counterpart to change your mindset, to be more supportive of your wife or your girlfriend to, um, to help them to pursue their career opportunity. I, I so to agree, uh, you know, and I, I really want to uh, bring this across table and definitely I'm talking about myself, but I wouldn't have been successful, you know, uh, mentally, psychologically, professionally, if I did not have a partner who would have made it successful. So to all the men in our lives, you know, I think we are here because of them to a lot of extent, yes. So, you know, that, that is because of, of that. Yeah. Right. If I add an example to that too, I mean the value of having a male partner is they also understand how some of the male psychic is. And my husband often says to me, now this is a bit of an Australian term, but he often says, you don't get it. Think like a bloke. Think how that bloke is thinking. Stop thinking like a woman. You don't get it. <laughs> and so we all need to see it from each other's sides and, and that will make a big difference. Well, I also want to add one thing is um, women, well, like myself, we tend to intimidate by other people or by other male. So like I met, one, uh, I met a career coach one time and then she said that um, a lot of men ask for it like promotion or salary, they would tell, hey, I do A, B, C, I increase the sales by how much, so I deserve a promotion. But on the other um, hand, the woman, does not ask for promotion. So like women need to be more aggressive in career to be like heard and be seen and to be treated fairly. If I can add a nice statistic to that, um, there was a study that showed that men will apply for a job when they feel they reach about 60% of the criteria of what's needed for that job. Now, given that men generally are more confident than women, they probably only have 50%, <laughs> but they'll apply for it. Whereas it showed that women will apply when they think they reach 100% of the criteria. So we're holding ourselves back, and it's a case of just put yourself forward and, and just go for things a lot more.
when we hear about women here, you, know, you either hear that you know you flaunt your femininity and you you know be more like a woman and you know you'll get what you want, or you have to be like a man and think like a man because that is when you'll be able to um, you know achieve or succeed. It's a quandary because at the end of the day, nobody's talking about be who you are. You're saying either be really feminine or be like a man. But where does your personality go? So have you faced, I, mean, I was lucky, I didn't have anyone to actually tell me that you need to be, uh, you know, a different person uh, than what I was and everybody accepted me in my, per in my career path the way I was. Uh, but have you had challenges where people expected you to be a little more girly or a little more manly, um, you know, f for you to take the next step forward? Well, well, well. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to add on, uh, you know, uh, so there are times when, uh, you know, you work in a corporate environment, right? And let us, let, let me tell you that all of us, and uh, I'll ask each woman in this room who doesn't like getting dressed up, who doesn't like makeup, I mean, of course, again, it's an individual choice, but I think, you know, uh, being oneself, being a gender of a woman, you know, flaunting that out is our right. And if we feel like doing it, it's our right. So, you know, uh, of course, definitely, you know, uh, you, you, you basically try to accommodate to the industry you're working in, and there is a mindset and environment you want to, you know, kind of dress like uh, a professional uh, whom you want to represent. You know, that, that, that has nothing to do with a gender, you know, uh, lookout. But, uh, yes, I mean, uh, nobody has ever come back to me and asked me to, you know, dress subtly or, you know, get more feminine. Definitely not. But, yes, I mean, um, in, in all the women conversations we have, it's very important to keep telling each other that, you know, you, you have to look good because you look good and you feel good, you perform better, right? And you live better. So that, that's, that's the only part I like to address. And I personally feel that, uh, you know, if somebody is asking you to dress or look in a particular way, I think it's a choice and you should exercise it, be it, be it a man or a woman. It should not be influencing you in your, um, you know, in your careers in any way. Um, that, that's, that's, that's what I feel. So yeah, I, I need to clarify. My husband wasn't telling me that I have to think like a bloke, but it's about understand how they think. Think, see it from a different angle. And you have to see it from their angle as well as they have to try to see it from your angle. But I do agree with being yourself. Um, what I've found is the most powerful part in the way you present yourself is as long as you do it with passion. It doesn't matter what your style is, whether you're quieter, whether you're more aggressive, um, you have a different style, it doesn't matter. If your passion comes through, that wins over every time. So I would strongly, strongly support that. I think you should be genuine about yourself. If you feel like you want to be like more like a man, more muscular, then do that. If you think like being a girl is your choice, being more family is your choice, just do that. Be genuine about it and don't listen to everything other people uh, intend to tell you because there are so many people and people have so many different opinions. So if you want to please everybody's like opinion, then you will get so lost. You don't know what to do and you will be paralyzed because every step you do, every decision you make, there's always somebody telling you, hey, this is not the right thing to do. This is not the right thing to say. Just need to like at some time be like ignore what other people say, be true to yourself. And I think like people know what is good to do, like good thing to do, not the good thing to say. People have that common sense. Just be genuine about it. So being a Barbie or a Ken is a choice. Okay. And now coming back to a little more, um, you know, things. Statistically, you know, in, in, in India especially, if you look at uh, the, the number of working women, especially the married women, in rural areas, surprisingly, is higher than in the urban area. And a lot of women tend to drop out of uh, the workforce after they get married in urban India, and which is not necessarily the case for India. And the numbers are abysmally low. They're about only 26 or 27% of the urban workforce, which is actually women. So forget about climbing you know, the successful ladder. You're talking about working women who are educated, who actually drop out of a career. Um, do you think it is? cultural from a family point of view or do you think it's cultural from a, from a, from a, from a, from an organizational point of view and have you seen similar 
uh, you know inconsistencies you know where women who tend to drop out of a of of of, a, of the workforce after they get married in other countries as well and what is your take on it considering especially that you know we're all married women and we've continued with our journey uh, you know what have your experiences been about that i think it's more economic you know this 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 is something to do uh, so when we when we talk about rural india or even in you know uh, cities you know if you see uh, you know people with low uh, economic income you will notice that women of those families are very hard working because instinctively you know women have a base of protection uh, you know and an emotional quotient which is higher than men and that's scientifically proven right so you will see that uh, and it's an observation right i mean um, obviously even the statistics do uh, kind of you know influence that but you will see that women from families who have lower economic income are out to work to support their families so that's something for all of us to be proud about because it shows our insti instinctive nat nature of probably being a lioness so that that's 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 something which is up yes definitely in um, you know uh, cadres where economically you know people are more stable in in urban india you will find uh, that you know women generally take a back seat after they uh, you know like get into the family way or they get into families but i think that's an individual's choice to a lot of extent um i think being a homemaker is equally empowering because you're actually going to be a mother teacher a family maker um you know and i think that's equally important i mean i i nowhere feel that that's less important than being a doctor or a, or a teacher but being recognized for that is something we need to start you know striving for so when i say break the glass ceiling if you're a homemaker break the glass ceiling and make people realize about your contributions even if it is not coming directly economically there's a lot of support you know and and there are laws right i mean if you look into california law or you know there's so many laws which actually give the couple a lot of right uh, even if one person is earning so there's something which actually needs to be thought about you know uh, on a regulation standpoint too going forward um, i mean there is a growing trend in males and females taking different roles uh for example i have our communications managers at at icrasat are a husband and wife that job share and they do 50-50 um more and more um there are different and um working situations being set up. I mean it's up to you to set those trends to help break and help with with what often is the case when women at a certain point in their career it's more challenging when you've got children etc. Um so we have to engage to to think differently and work and live our life differently that suits us. Um I think in US and China we have sort of similar problem as well. So when the woman get married they tend to quit the job force because the cost of putting the kids to the daycare is more expensive than like their earning. So like when you do the math it makes sense. But what they didn't um take into consideration is if because salary you don't earn a fixed salary you get a promotion but if you look at the long term that how much money you're going to earn versus how much cost you're going to put the kids into daycare actually in long term staying in the workforce make more sense even though nowadays like you have to pay more to for the kids to go to the daycare so i think like my suggestion for the woman is if you are mom if you want to be a full time stay home mom if that's your passion do it but if you want to like feel like you sacrifice your career and you so struggle to balance your career and home think twice do not focus on the short term benefit the short term cost saving that you're going to have by quitting the job and not having the not to pay the babies like daycare think for long term what's your goal for your career and and talk to your husband about it get his support get his insight get his like um suggestion on that and then make a decision from there my next question actually sorry you wanted to yeah i was just going to add i think there's a lot of misconceptions that if you're a working mother uh that you're disadvantaging your children you also set an amazing example for your children about what you can achieve and having a vision and wanting to do more in life um 
It, it's, uh, and, and you know, you children often grow up, my children have grown up so independent, <laughs> which is actually really going to help them in life as well. You know, they, they have to be part of the whole family and what we're all trying to achieve. And so, yes, there's trade-offs, but don't think it's always a disadvantage for the children. They really grow and learn a lot more from seeing what you can achieve and you engage them in your work. Oh my gosh, I take my work home all the time and I make my children give me ideas and I put up flip charts and they, <laughs> they contribute as well. <laughs> it's about quality time rather than actually quantity time. So it's not about how much time you spend, it's but how you channelize the time that you have with your family that matters. Okay, the next question is for you. At Limousine, you guys, you're very open about the fact that you're diverse. You, are, you, you have women founders, um, you know, you, that 50% of your workforce is women. Um, and then you have uh, your workforce comprises of people, people from different ethnic groups. Have you ever faced any sort of, um, um, you know, some kind of a lashback or where people have been reserved about the choices you've made as an organization? Um, have you, when you go for conferences or when you meet people from different investors, have they seen, oh, you know, you have a significant f portion of your founders who are women. Um, how have they perceived that? You know, would you well, be able to share? Um, I think I tend not to say that. I think like when they say, that, well, we, ha we met some investor and they have some concern about the, like maybe the business model, like all the VC, they have some sort of concern. I tend to think that is because our, um, the way we run the business versus we're not white or we're not all men. So I tend to not let the diverse, like be, being a minority and being a woman affect me. And then trying to overcome that hurdle and trying to persuade them or show them that how well our business is run and how efficiently we can save the, like the, the, the cost that's my um, way to like um, when we have questions from so the outside So people. you divert them to yeah. look at things not from, a, from, from, not from a diversity point of view, but get back into talking about your business plan and yeah. Yeah. show in hand. Yeah. Uh, Joanna, you've traveled the world. You've worked with people in rural sector across the world. You've met women who are not necessarily B school or Ivy League graduates, but are still part of a workforce. Um, they would have been successful in their own way. Did you see accomplishment, satisfaction, even though we don't see them in newspapers, you know, when you open a newspaper, you don't see the CEO of a thing. Do you feel that some of those women are probably more accomplished or empowered than people you might find in a corporate setup? Absolutely. The challenges some of these rural women have just makes our challenges look so insignificant. Uh, I mean, I could tell story after story. I mean, maybe I'll just give one. Um, and this is um, a woman who lost her husband. She had three children. Um, all the brothers of the husband took all the agricultural land and left her a very small piece that, that was very rocky, very arid, almost unusable. Um, and I will say, you know, women who farm land own 1% of that land. So the land they actually have formal ownership over is 1% globally, and so it's, it's significant. Anyway, this woman was given the worst land. So rock by rock, she moved every piece of rock from that land to try to make it farmable. She, she was engaged in some of Icrasat's programs that helped her get access to water um, and how to, to um, do agriculture. She built a farm. She educated all three children. She eventually started a shop where she was an entrepreneur with that. And, and she, she built up a, a normal life um, from what would have been to us the most destitute situation where she had absolutely nothing. She had three children. She'd lost her husband, the land taken away. Um, and and they, just, they just do it through perseverance. They just keep going. And, and I think a little bit like you said, they see the long term. And so just step by step, they keep working at it. And it's just so inspiring what some others, have, challenges others have been through. Um, yeah, so it was good. Okay, my last question is to you, Namita. Um, we have legislations. We talk about, you know, uh, Equal Remuneration Act, women should be paid on par with men. Um, we've got now saying that, you know, they should be independent directors who are women on boards. So there are legislations which talk about equality, they talk about women's rights. But statistically, you know, 
when you have reports that say, you know, there's still a huge disparity between uh, wages. As a lawyer, you know, you think it's about, and you know, when you ask an organization, you'll always have a justification as to why there is a, why there's a remuneration disparity or there's a disparity between um, the reality and what is required under law. As an organization, or you know, as a lawyer who works with organizations, uh, do you think that legislation is enough or does it need something more? And what can be done at an organization level to bridge the gap and bring the reality closer to what the law requires? Okay, so India has come up with many, uh, you know, regulatory legislations, Bosch being one of the latest, and all of us have been talking about it. To a large extent, it is pretty comprehensive, okay? Companies are implementing it, okay? And it's, it's you know, uh, especially for, you know, if I talk about the corporate sector, I see uh, uh, that, you know, companies have really taken it very seriously. The human resource team have really taken it seriously. Diversity is something in India which is really considered as a very serious parameter for companies. So, you know, to a lot of extent, I would say, as, as a country, we have progressed, okay? We have good legislation. Now, there's nothing like a best legis legislation to be, you know, uh, to be up there. Um, obviously, there are gaps. There have been various committees which have been formed to identify these gaps. And, you know, the government has been working. It's, it's not that. But change will come with time, right? We need everybody around us, uh, be it a man or a woman, to participate in, in change. It's very important for each working woman to understand, even your, you know, how many of us even go back to our housemaids and tell, uh, tell them that they also have a a protection under the uh, new um, anti-sexual harassment policies and laws. You know, they, they are under domestic labor and they are under labor, uh, you know, laws. So have we personally gone back and educated women? You know, so are we taking that kind of stand? And uh, in the beginning of the session, there was a very beautiful thought, uh, you know, which was, um, which was floated that it's women who take up women. You know, so here is an opportunity for us to form circles, you know, to form groups, you know, take women along with each other, impart knowledge, tell them about what is there which they are not aware of, and let them, you know, understand their, uh, uh, their rights. Uh, and I think that's the, that's the best way to move forward. So uh, we are there, we are moving there, and I'm sure the way uh, people are changing, thoughts are changing, and we are evolving, uh, I think uh, we'll, we'll make a significant impact, yeah. Just what would you, you know, to everybody else here, men and women, you know, when we talk about women empowerment and uh, women, you know, breaking through glass ceiling, whether real or imaginary in the mind, um, what would your advice be to, or a suggestion be, men and women? Um, I'll start with Yin. Um, I think my suggestion to the woman is be more aggressive, ask for things, don't wait for things hand over to you because as women, we intend to like wait for things hold over, uh, hand over to us, be aggressive. And the other, um, another suge the suggestion for men is think for your counterpart, think what they have been going through, what's your life like, be like, um, be passionate and also be like offer them help and and so that like we can like empower women in the workforce and every day. I think I'd like to end on a an example of a management course I went on very early in my career, which told me about what a really good manager should do. And they said, they're really like a gap filler. So you should be really aware of the whole team. You should see where the biggest needs are and fill that gap. And of course I thought, oh yeah, that sounds wonderful, theoretically fantastic. And I went ahead and did that until years later I realized, oh my gosh, what am I doing? Because that's what women do. We just fill the gap. And of course, the gap's not gonna be the leadership role. <laughs> Others have taken that. So sometimes you just get out of the norm get out of the box, take a leadership role, move forward, take those risks and do it with passion. That's so, so important. You're a team, men are on the team, women are on the team, but just get out, stand outside of the box, think outside of the box, just move forward and, um, and do something and, and and uh, do something you're not comfortable with as well, but don't fill the gap. In my, my entire career and life, I would say there are two things which I've le learned, and I would want each woman or even a man to you know, abide by that, is play with your strengths. 
You know, it's, it's always important. Um, you know, very few people would actually reckon to the fact that two people, you know, uh, it's one in 32 million, I'm, I'm giving you a statistics of Gallup, where two people uh, have the same strengths, the top 34 strengths of two people. It, it's that, that varied, it's like your fingerprint. So first of all, know your strengths, okay? And your strengths can be your biggest weaknesses too. So that's, that's a different topic we can just you know, keep on talking about. But understand what your strengths are and play to the fullest. The second thing is have empathy. Um, it's very important in life to understand um, you know, the other person's perspective and situation. So be it a man or a woman, you know, I always feel that you know, before you take a decision or before you treat somebody you know, in a particular way, empathize and put yourself in that position. Uh, it, it's a fact, you know, um, India has been emerging, right? As a, as a country, we've seen, uh, if you look at a generation, one, one generation back, their, their thought processes were different. You know, they came from a classical economy background. You know, how they thought about a job was different. When you look at, you know, people right now, you have millennials. So their thought process is, is absolutely different, right? So it's, it's very important to understand that we have evolved even as a, as a race, uh, and I'm going to see more more of empathy coming into picture uh, now. So these are the two top tips. So we, we, we so basically, women take home is be em have empathy, um, know your strengths and use them. Uh, don't fill in gaps. You know, take on the leadership roles. Be assertive, and men support the women. So with that, we'll end today's session. Thank you all for being a patient audience.